Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. And today we have another fresh set of crazy revenge stories. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. And our first story. Think you can steal my stuff and get away with it? Good luck studying for exams with a broken laptop. Back in my first year of college, I lived in a residence hall on campus with three other dudes. Two of them were cool, shout out to B-Dog and Al, but the third named David had a nasty habit of taking things that weren't his and mysteriously forgetting that the objects had fallen into his possession. Of the items he'd stolen and were subsequently found in his room included food and snacks, notebooks, vapes, earbuds, albeit cheap ones. We'd all complain to the RA, but since they were such small items, we were told we should just have a house meeting and talk about it with David to have the problem fixed. We had two of those where he claimed, it all looks so similar, how am I supposed to know which is mine? Considering that we all kept our stuff in our rooms, this was obviously BS, but the RA, resident assistant, said unless it was something major, campus police wouldn't launch an official investigation. So we instituted a masking tape policy and marked everything, but lo and behold, he still continued his petty theft. Knowing nothing would happen unless I took action, I planned my revenge. I shelled out around 80 bucks for something similar to this bad boy. It was a USB device that, once plugged into an unsecured USB port, fried the computer by building a charge and dispersing it into the port, pretty much destroying the CPU, among other parts. Now, obviously, I wasn't going to plant this anywhere, but I had to make it seem like this was a tool and not some sort of setup. So I'd roped B-Dog and Al into my plan and installed this software called Device Lock which protects USB ports from being used without express permission from the user on all of our devices, also in case the a-hole tried to plug it into our laptops. I even went as far as taping my name to this silicon time bomb. With them roped in, the last thing to do was wait to see if David had learned his lesson. It took all of three days, but expectedly David did not learn his lesson. I was at the library when it happened, but David had decided that this sexy USB would be the perfect addition to his collection of stolen wares. So he went into my room and took it. Big mistake. I got a Snapchat from B-Dog that David was going postal and I needed to get back ASAP. I hightailed it, and when I got near our residence, I could physically hear David swearing and yelling from the hallway. When I got inside, he was cussing and screaming that he was going to sue me for purposely trying to damage his laptop by booby-trapping a USB. Admittedly, I should have held my composure better, but I laughed in that mofo's face. I told him that the USB was clearly labeled with my name on my desk in my room, and I was using it to test whether my computer ports were secured from devices such as this. Screaming ensued from him, after which our RA showed up, heard that crap fest from down the hall, and asked what the hell was happening. I stayed quiet and let David attempt to lie his way out of this, but holy F, the dumb crap kept to his story. After explaining my side, the RA said we're both going to campus police as this was pretty serious. Cue me thinking I just effed up my whole future for a stupid act of revenge. When we got there and explained our stories, campus police had none of David's crap. They told him that, one, he cannot sue me since this was not a trap, but a security tool that was within my own living space, of which he had no right to enter to steal from, and two, he was being relocated to the crappy single residences on the other side of campus, and if they caught wind of this again, he'd be banned for life from residence as well as receiving a non-academic offense, a nice little chat with the dean about his misconduct. His tone immediately flipped to crying and saying he had all his exam notes on there, it was stress that was causing him to do this, and he'd paid to live in a nicer dorm-style housing, but they basically told him, tough crap, this is your one and final warning. The three of us enjoyed the rest of the semester with an extra bedroom for storage space and beer pong, which was a definite win. As for David, I've only ever seen him in the cafeteria or library on occasion, sitting there studying without his laptop. I'd be curious to know what his side of the story was. And our second story. How my dad conned a con man, then ruined his conning business. Years ago, shortly after I moved out, my dad decided he wanted to remodel his bathroom and hired a local contractor to do it, who I'll refer to as DB. He'd previously fixed a clogged sink for him. From the start, my dad was extremely skeptical of contractors and did not want to get scammed. So after they agreed on a price for labor, my dad asked him for an invoice for the cost of all the materials. 
He took said invoice to one of his co-workers whose brother-in-law was a plumber or in construction or something to look over the list of materials to see if the quote was fair. And right off the bat, DB was trying to do close to a 50% markup on the materials. So instead of paying DB's invoice, my dad just bought all the materials himself, saying he knows a guy who gives him amazing discounts, so DB doesn't get suspicious that my dad was onto his game. After three months, the bathroom's not even close to being done, despite DB telling him it'd take two months. My dad had to travel for work and be gone for a week, so he asked me to house sit and make sure that DB shows up to work and does not steal anything. Right off the bat, DB tries to be all buddy-buddy with me, but I didn't like the guy, so I just brushed him off, asked him how the bathroom was coming. Over the course of the week, DB tried to upsell me on a bunch of things he said needed to be done to finish the bathroom. Most of it was electrical work, which he didn't have a license for. My dad filled me in before he left about what was quoted in the labor, and there was no electrical work quoted, and I told him, nope, just stick to the original quote. Once my dad comes back, I filled him in on all the additional charges DB tried to tack on, he also didn't show up for three days, saying he hurt his shoulder tripping over his cat. Then he tried to install the new ceiling light, which he was not asked to install because we had an electrician coming to install it. After a heated discussion between DB and I, he stopped installing the ceiling light and started laying tile, during which he broke a quarter of the tiles. After this debacle, my dad did some investigating and looked up DB's license and found that not only was the license expired, it didn't belong to DB. So my dad asked my brother and I to come over when he was going to confront DB about lying about his license. A very heated argument broke out when my dad refused to let DB enter the house to collect his tool and said we would bring the tools out to him. DB then threatened to press charges against me for assault when I accidentally brushed his shoulder when I was passing him in the hallway and I refused to apologize. After the cops showed up, DB quickly tried to play the victim but the cops told DB to collect his tools and leave. The bathroom still unfinished, my dad did not have to pay DB for his three months of labor and used that money to hire real contractors to finish the bathroom. It only took them a week and a half. After this, my dad contacted the local news to tell them about DB being a con man. A few months later, the news did an investigative story about him and found other people that DB had scammed where he'd start work on their bathrooms but once he got paid, he would cut and run, leaving the bathroom unfinished and stealing the materials. The news then set up a sting for DB and exposed him for being a con man, and he was arrested not long after the news story aired. I hope DB's other victims were able to recoup some of their losses. And our last story. Credit card skimmer gets what he bought with my card. And a bit extra. This story starts off with a slightly less humorous fact. A few days ago, I was the unfortunate victim of credit card fraud. The fraudsters decided to take my credit card info and purchase $1,000 worth of car parts from Philadelphia and have it sent across the border to the city I currently live in in Canada. Normally, this is where the story ends. Sometimes they get away with it, sometimes they don't. But either way, my card is replaced and I continue on living my life. This, however, is where the fun starts happening. I get a call in the morning about a DHL shipment entering the country that's required customs to be paid. Knowing I haven't shipped anything with DHL in forever, they're the worst, I quickly come to the realization that it must be the fraudsters shipping their goods here. It can't be, I thought. Who in their right mind would use a stolen card to order something to their own house in the city the owner of the card lives in? After a brief chat with DHL about the customs fees I would not be paying, I managed to obtain the address the package was being sent to. I hemmed and hawed about it, but eventually decided the best thing to do was call the local police department and let them know what was up. I told the officer all about the situation, that unfortunately I did not know what car the parts were for, and that I hope this info helps them somehow in the future. He tells me that the chances are slim, but he'll swing by the house, it's literally 15 minutes from my own, just to see if anything weird is going on and follow up with me if he needs to. I thank him and go on with my workday. About an hour later, I get a call from the same officer, obviously excited. Hi, Altelier Vua Point. It's Officer X. You'll never guess what just happened. I was following up on the report and drove by the house. I decided to knock on the door just to see if anybody was home and ask them a couple questions. A man opened the door, and as we were talking, DHL drove up to deliver the package. Yeah, that's right. The exact package we'd been discussing. The delivery driver walks up to the door and says, Hi, is Antlier Vupont here? To which the man replies, Oh yeah, he's downstairs. 
You can imagine my surprise. That's pretty funny because I just got off the phone with him and I know for a fact he doesn't live here. The guy, no joke, looked me dead in the face and goes, oh, whatever, the package is paid for. I chuckled and turned to the DHL driver to tell him he should leave because I need to make an arrest. I'm calling you while I drive back to the precinct. Thought it might brighten your day. I still can't believe they caught the guy, but thought it was a story that was too good not to share. Actual justice from law enforcement. The story almost restores some of my faith in the universe. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.